My name is Mark Lobbes. Uh, I'm a dedicated breast radiologist at the Zuiderland Medical Center, which has two locations in uh, Sittard Geleen and uh, Heerle in the southern parts of the Netherlands. Uh, I've been practicing breast imaging as a radiologist since 2011, and my main areas of interest are contrast-enhanced mammography, which I've been uh, implementing in everyday clinical practice in since 2012. And my main areas of expertise and, and research are trying to implement contrast-enhanced mammography as a really certified imaging tool in everyday clinical practice. So contrast enhanced mammography is a new uh, type of mammographic examination. Um, it has uh, quite some similarities to conventional mammography. So um, the patient still needs to be positioned between two compression paddles. But before we do the image acquisition, we administer uh, contrast uh, through the bloodstream uh, in a similar fashion that we're used to for using, uh, for example, in, in CT examinations. So we're quite familiar with those uh, protocols. Um, now, after two minutes, the patient is placed between the compression paddles and the machine itself does not take one image, but in quick succession, it takes two separate images with a different energy spectrum, but that's a little bit of a technical uh, um, uh, story behind that. But it allows us as a radiologist to not only look at the normal mammogram, but it also provides us with what they call a recombined image. And that's an, an uh, image in which areas of contrast uptake can be visualized. Well, these areas of contrast uptake are suspicious for breast cancer, but not really a proof of breast cancer, because there are still many other uh, benign uh, structures that can also cause enhancement but at least it should be triggered uh, to the radiologist that there's something of relevance going on right there and uh, it should be further investigated for example with targeted ultrasound. During the years, we have more extended the indications for which we use contrast enhanced mammography. Uh, at first, when I started to implement contrast enhanced mammography, I chose to reserve it for the recalls from breast cancer screening, uh, because I thought there was already uh, a higher chance of detecting a, a breast cancer in those uh, women. Uh, and that would sort of justify for me the use of iodinated contrast agents and also the slight increase in radiation exposure for those women. Now with time, we grew more and more confident and more and more scientific literature uh, was becoming available from different groups as well uh, and that's the reason why we right now have not only the recall uh, evaluation from women that are referred from screening but also preoperative evaluation of breast cancer extent where we used to do breast MRI we now do a lot of contrast enhanced mammography for that indication but you can also think about response monitoring in women uh, treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy that's also a big terrain of uh, breast MRI before but uh, more and more evidence is occurring that you can use contrast enhanced mammography for that indication as well. Now the benefit of contrast enhanced mammography is that it's easy to use. You can implement it in your own mammography suite uh, uh, almost directly after you see the patient for the first time. And that allows us to do all the necessary biopsies, uh, not make separate appointments to, to breast MRI. And it allows to uh, make our workflow more efficient. For example, when we uh, look at the, uh, the way we practice it in the Zuiderland Medical Center is that when a patient has a suspicious palpable mass, we do a targeted ultrasound at first. And if we see some solid mass or something that is highly suspicious of uh, breast cancer, we immediately perform a contrast enhanced mammography because we also want to do the preoperative staging as well. Even if we have contralateral breast cancer or multifocal breast cancer, we detect it right away and we can do the necessary biopsies. And we can do the auxiliary staging with ultrasound at the same session as a sort of a one-stop shop modality. Now, we at the, our hospital have the luxury as well with our colleagues from the Department of Pathology that we have 24-hour diagnostics for breast cancer uh, biopsies. And we also decided to have uh, multidisciplinary team meetings every day during lunchtime. Uh, so in, in fact, we can offer these patients within one working day, not only the biopsy results of everything that was uh, uh, observed on contrast enhanced mammography, but also discuss them in an MDT meeting and have the whole preoperative uh, plan already available for them within uh, one or two working days.
The most important thing is that you have an automated injector. Uh, it's possible to do it manually, but you need to realize that you have uh, uh, volumes of contrast from 90 to 120 cc's, and you can administer them manually, but it's becoming very strenuous for technicians, especially if you do multiple patients on a short notice, for example, in one morning. So the use of an automated injector eases your life a little bit, and especially the life of your technicians. Now, uh, when administering contrast, you always have to take into account the possibility of uh, renal impairment uh, or hypersensitivity reactions. And the same rules sort of apply to the use of iodinated contrast agents like you are used to using at uh, CT examinations. So your department needs to be equipped and trained for that as well and to cope with any kinds of these reactions. Now, when you administer the contrast, you wait for approximately two minutes before you do the mammographic positioning. And the mammographic positioning should be performed uh, in the similar fashion as that your technicians are used to. So this is an interesting case of a 67 year old woman who had prior breast surgery because of an invasive carcinoma on the other side for uh, which I will not show at this point. Um, she presented herself with a palpable mass in her other breast after some years. And uh, because of a suspicious character of the palpable finding, we immediately did a contrast enhanced uh, mammography in this case. Uh, and I will show you here the craniocaudal views of the, the right breast only. So here you have the low energy uh, image of that case which shows heterogeneously dispersed uh, dense uh, fibroglandular tissue with actually no really circumscribed uh, masses or architectural distortions. You don't see any pathological calcifications but when you look at the recombined image which shows you areas of uh, contrast capture you actually see an ill-defined heterogeneously enhancing mass uh, popping up over there which was uh, apparently obscured by the dense fibroglandular tissue and that really helps us in detecting the breast cancer Cancer, not only in terms of detecting the breast cancer, but also establishing, uh, establishing its true size. So in this case, we have a 57 year old female who was recalled from breast cancer screening for because of a very small, rather well-defined round mass in the uh, outer part of the left breast, uh, which wasn't uh, present at uh, prior mammograms. Um, because of her recall from screening, we immediately did a contrast enhanced mammography, despite the fact that she had rather uh, a low density of uh, glandular tissue, but that's standard practice in our, in our hospital. And you don't see any enhancement occurring on the recombined image. In fact, in this case, you see an absence of enhancement. You sort of see in a black void appearing over there. And this is a typical example of what we have defined as an eclipse sign. And this is very suspicious or very suggestive of a simple cyst. And it doesn't even require additional ultrasound uh, to check it. Uh, this can be immediately dismissed. Uh, we didn't see any abnormalities on the contralateral breast. And with the high negative predictive value of contrast enhanced mammography, we know that it is safe to assume that this patient can be discharged immediately and returned to breast cancer screening in two years time. Now, in this case of uh, the 60 year old woman who was treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy, again, the uh, series of images on the left side of the monitor is the baseline examination in which you can clearly see at the six o'clock position, uh, irregular shaped mass, which is also heterogeneously enhancing on the recombined images. And um, the uh, image uh, after four cycles of chemotherapy, which is this set of images, you can actually uh, quite clearly see some kind of response to therapy which uh, increases further at this set of images which is at the end of the chemotherapy treatment. Here you absolutely see no residual enhancement, only a faint amount of residual enhancement but no abnormalities anymore on the low energy images uh, suggesting a good response to therapy. The first one is, is that it always takes a little bit of a leap of faith uh, um, uh, when evaluating the images. You're not familiar with these kinds of images. So if you still feel the need to confirm your findings with a breast MRI, I would have a very low threshold of doing the actual breast MRI, but then collect your cases and review them at a later stage. You're familiar with what you uh, see on breast MRI, and then you can sort of go back to your contrast enhanced mammography uh, examination and see how it looks like on those images. That really helps you in, in building confidence in this technique. 
Now the other thing is very practical. Uh, sometimes there can be uh, the occurrence of contrast contamination. You have these small uh, specks of uh, contrast on your uh, recombined images, which can sort of mimic microcalcifications on your low energy mammographic image. Now you can deal with that very easily. We in our hospital uh, decide that we either wear gloves doing the, the manipulation of the contrast to prevent any kind of contamination, or you can make it even more easy to have two technicians in the room one is handling all the contrast and all the contrast vials and everything that's uh, associated with that and the other technician does the positioning when the contrast is administrated and in that way you can also prevent that there is contamination of contrast within the breast. Well, I think the most important take home message is that contrast enhanced mammography is here to stay. Uh, it's not a research tool anymore, but it's a really uh, a dedicated breast imaging technique that has now found its way to clinical practice. And it's our job as a radiologist to really figure out where the strength and weaknesses lie of this technique. But I'm fully confident that it's a technique that's here to stay.